today, guys, I'm going to teach individuals how to create their first final expense ad in five minutes. And there's a lot of life insurance agents that I come across and their biggest issue is, well, I don't want to learn all that. You know, I don't want to know how to create an entire ad. You know, what can I do? And, but I still want to run ads. I still want to make sure that I have ads out there that I can control the cost. Because right now, just to give you a perspective on that, you know, if you buy a lead from a vendor, you buy aged leads for about 25, 30 bucks, um, meaning that that's not guaranteed to be a sale. So you might spend a uh, thousand to two thousand dollars in order to get one or two or maybe three, hopefully three sales. So what happens is your profit margins are a little bit lower. Um, if you want to get, you know, those high intense leads, meaning that they're fresh, they're new, they know exactly what they're getting uh, or why they opted into that, you know, that ad, then you're looking to pay 50 to 75. So that eats into your cost more because they, again, you're not guaranteed to close. That's just how much you're, you're, you're paying to get the actual lead. And it's up to you on the other end to close as many of those as possible so that your margin, your profit margin is, is higher. So the goal today is, hey, how can I run my ads? But I want to be quick. I want to put my ads out there because the name of the game here with running your own Facebook ads is there's a, there's a period, there's an adjustment period. And that adjustment period starts where, hey, I'm running ads. Uh, I'm, I'm putting them out there to see if, you know, I get any traction to see if people opt in. Okay, you're getting people opting in and, and, and saying that they want to learn more about final expense. Okay, now I got some phone call schedule. Okay, now that my phone calls are scheduled, how am I closing these people? Um, so there's an adjustment period, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel because once you become good at this, nobody can ever take that away from you. Nobody can ever take the fact that you know how to generate leads. You have a process and a system where you can call these leads. You know how to get on the phone and close these leads, which is what we're teaching in our course. And now I'm starting to close them. So yes, there's an adjustment period, but what's going to separate you as a life insurance agent from the other life insurance agent is that you're going to have that skill. And you took the time to learn that skill. And what happened is now for the rest of your career, a lot of people say this when, when they refer to Facebook ads is you can print money. Because once you get an ad that, that is working and you know how to finagle with the ads manager, all of a sudden you can print your own money. And it's very powerful because, you know, we always rely on somebody else. We always rely on either, man, this is my warm market. Hopefully they respond to this ad or hopefully, sorry, hopefully they respond to this post or we're relying on hopefully this lead vendor that I'm buying from is giving me good leads. But when you rely on yourself and you can scale it, that's powerful because our philosophy here is, hey, organic marketing is going to give you a few sales here and there, right? It's going to it's going to be able to feed you here and there. But in order, if you want to scale it, in order to scale it, you're going to have to be able to run ads, right? And all you're doing whenever you're running an ad is you're finding the message that fits your audience the best. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to share my screen for that. Number one, you create a business page, Facebook business page, um, and you can name it whatever you want. Now, one thing I, I realized is working for a lot of people recently is if you name it something that coincides with what you're trying to offer in your ad. So for example, I see a lot of success with people who name their page senior benefits, right? Because when people see the ad and then the name of the page, you're like, oh, that actually, you know, that that's a good idea. Seeing your benefits, it looks trustworthy. And the second thing you're going to need is to create uh, an ad account, a Meta ad account or Facebook ad account since they changed their name, same company, but Meta or Facebook ad account. Pretty easy to set up. What I'm going to make sure I do going forward is I'm going to make sure that I create a video separately so you guys have access to how to create those two things. Quick five minute video. So there's three parts to an ad that you need to understand. There's the campaign. Campaign is just saying, Facebook wants to know, what are you doing? What do you want, right? What, what, what's your initiative here? Then there's ad sets. Ad sets is basically saying, who do you want to see this? Like, who are you looking for? Right? Tell me a little bit more about the budget that you want. You enter your budget, you enter who do you want to see that ad. And then there's the ad. The ad is the physical part that people see. It's creating the actual ad that people are gonna see in their timeline. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually log into my ad account here. This is a demo account that I created just to show some demonstrations. And I'm gonna sh show you how I would create a simple Facebook ad. Uh, the first thing you wanna do is to hit create. When you hit create, you're creating a campaign. Um, that campaign, the first thing they're gonna do is ask you a few questions. So the first thing they wanna know is, what type of ad is this, right? You leave this top here, buying type, there's auction. Auction means that 
um, that's how your 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 pain for this ad is auction type. You're bidding with other people who are running ads. Just you know, whoever has the highest bid wins. So you'll see in the budget area where that comes into play. So you always can choose what type of campaign you're running. Awareness. Hey, I want to create brand awareness. Traffic. You want people to go to website. Engagement. You want people to comment, like your post. Um, or you could do. I want to generate leads. You want to promote an app. You want to get sales. Uh, the most powerful and effective we do is leads. Now, the reason why that's in powerful, I'm going to show you in a minute, is that whenever you generate leads on Facebook, Facebook has an ability to do in-house on Facebook, fill out a form. And the reason why that's effective is because typically they don't actually have to fill much out because Facebook already has their info. Facebook has their name, email, phone number. So when they click on your form to say, yeah, I want to learn more about this, everything's filled out. All they have to do at the end is maybe answer one or two questions, hit submit, and they're good. So the first thing you want to do is give this a name. So I would name it final expense, should say. And then you want to hit next. So you gave it a name Now you want to hit next. Now what it's going to do is going to take you to the ad set. Now remember, step number one campaign is, hey, what do you want? You want leads, you want sales, you want uh, awareness. Obviously, we're doing leads because we want leads on Facebook. And then the second part is your ad set, right? So here an ad set is basically asking you, hey, where do you want these leads to go? Do you want them to go to like a website that you have, like a funnel? Or do you want to do instant forms that's in-house, like I mentioned earlier, in-house Facebook? The instant forms are more effective. And here's a few reasons why. Number one, Facebook hates when you send people off their platform because the more people on their platform doing things and filling things, uh, the better for them. Number two, it's uh, easier and user friendly for the people filling out the form. Because like I said, as soon as they click on, they want more info, that form pops up already probably 50% filled out with all the basic information. So you want to do instant forms. Then here you want to pick the page that you're running it on. So like I mentioned earlier, you know, create your Facebook page is so easy to do. Um, ours is called Legacy Crusade. That's where we usually typically run our, our ads from. Um, you can name yours whatever you want. Maybe a, you know, either aligned with your agency name, aligned with your name. Maybe you are your own brand. Or if you want to do create a page specifically for final expense, you can name it like Senior Benefits. And like I said, a lot of times we've seen success with that because people see Senior Benefits and say, oh, this must be a, a hub for senior information. Um, and as you go down, you create your daily budget. Now, you can start this with whatever you want. So if you have a small budget, put $5 a day, right? You'll get you know, a little bit of results, but you can start testing it out. Um, what I've noticed is that people start seeing big results at $25 per day. Now for you, if you want to start off small, start off at $5 just to get your feet wet, just so you can learn how this operates. You can see different things. So we'll leave it at 20 for now. Then you can uh, select when you want it to start. Always start it the next day at 12 a.m. And the reason being is that if I select a $20 a day budget, then what happens is Facebook is from, let's say they approve it right now and I, you know, they run my ad. They're going to try to spend that whole $20 budget for the day from now till 12 a.m. So I don't want them to do that. I want to start fresh from the next day. So I typically go, you know, the next day and I, I'll put 12 and then I'll put a.m. here. So that means that tonight at midnight is when this ad is going to be, you know, running. Well, tomorrow at midnight is when this ad is going to be running. And then the other thing is you pick your audience. Who do you want to see this? Now, one thing that used to be very popular that is popular with some uh, things that you sell online is you get very targeted, meaning that, hey, I'm looking for this specific person who likes this, who is into this. But for final expense, we just honestly pick the location. So for example, if you're, if you are um, licensed in certain states, put those states, that's it. Don't put any state obviously that you're not licensed in because then you don't want to generate leads in a state you're not licensed in because then you're going to have to get that license. And it's going to be an ordeal where you're like, man, I got this client, I can't close them. So put all the states that you're licensed in, list them all. If you're just licensed in one, put one. I'm going to leave it United States for now for me, but only put the, the states that you're licensed in. And how do you do that is you simply hit edit into locations and you would type in the name of the state. So I would if I were if it was me, I would delete United States. And then I would type in here. Let's just start with my state. And then I would also change um, instead of people who visited 
people living in this location, right? Because I don't want tourists calling me who live in Texas, who are in Chicago visiting, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, they want to get life insurance, and I can't because I'm not, even though I am licensed in Texas, I'm just giving for scenario purposes. So let's put Illinois. You'll see here it pops up. It says Illinois, United States state. So that's the entire state of Illinois that I'll have seen this ad. And again, I'm licensed in about 12 states. I get oh, maybe like eight states. So I would add all of those. Well, I'm not going to do that now. Um, the second part, and it's probably the most important, is age, right? So you would edit the age and just put 50 and older, right? Some... Um, Final expense companies allow you to do 45 and older. I'll just scroll all the way down till you get to 50 and then select 50 and older, right? Now, just a heads up, because Facebook doesn't allow you to do under a certain age, you may get some people who are older than 85. Typically 85 to 89 is the cutoff, depending on what company that you're writing final expense with. I know some companies do 89, some companies do 85. You might get so, Sometimes what I like to do in my Facebook form uh, or in, in I'll show you like in the, in the copy, sometimes you can put, hey, this is for people between 80, ages 50 and 85. Um, what will happen is you still might get somebody not paying attention. They still might fill it out. So just be a <laughs> heads up. That happened to me. I got somebody like 95 calling me. It may happen. Um, so advanced targeting. Uh, I leave this on. Um, actually, you know what? For simplicity purposes, detailed targeting. Oh, actually, I'll leave that off. Yeah, I'll leave that off. Um, and then placement. So for placement, this simply means, hey, where do you want, you know, to show this ad? Now, if you leave it the recommended one, they'll put it in a bunch of different places. But for me, I like to go in manual and I like to just take, turn off Instagram because Instagram has separate rules in Facebook. Turn off audience networks. I'll leave it on Facebook for now because I don't want any difficulties, any issues. I just want to leave it on Facebook. And the second thing is I just leave it on the feed because typically people 50 and older or senior 60 and older, they don't go in all these other places on Facebook. So I like to leave just the feed on, right? That means that when they're going scrolling through, they'll see my ad, but then all my budget will be spent on Facebook showing my ad on their feed only. So that's better for me because then it's a better chance of my audience, which are 50 and older, seeing it instead of all these other places. Because you look at Facebook, it's a whole world of different places. They have marketplace, they have that. And I don't know if 50 plus old people are there. I'm barely on those other things. So I leave that alone. Um, I turn off Facebook stories. Uh, I may leave Facebook reels on just because reels are everywhere. So everybody's gonna see my reels. So once I'm done with that, I'm selecting who I want to see this. Um, I don't want it in any articles, no articles. Just want it on my feed and my reels. And pretty much leave that alone. So once that's done, so I already got, what is my initiative? My campaign is just for, to get leads. Ad set part two is just, hey, who do you want to see this? What's your budget? You know, what are your goals? Where do you want this ad to show up? And then once you do that, it's creating the physical ad. So once you hit next, you can go and create the physical ad. Now, this is where I'm going to show you my hack on how to create an ad, because I get a lot of people who they don't want to learn all that. Hey, you know, what can I do? What's working? And here's a, where, a way where I found that this actually works. So the first part is your image. So what I like to do is I like to select a single image. And what I like to do is I like to go, I use this, this resource here, is I go to ad library. So if you go Google Facebook ad library, they actually, you know, one of the, the best sayings that I hear out there is people say, you know, it's good to copy somebody, right? If you're gonna be a copycat, copy the right cat. So with Facebook ad library, you can look and see what ads are out there and what looks like it's working. So when you go to Facebook, you, you type in Facebook ad library or meta ad library in Google, this will pop up and this will show you all the ads that are running. So the first thing you see is I only select the United States. The second thing is I want to select the ones I want to look at all ads. And then the next part about that is I want to choose burial coverage, right? So it's going to show me the existing ads out there that 
are running for burial expenses or burial coverage. So I get to kind of take a look and say, oh, you know what? I like this. I don't like that. And I can piece together my own ad without coming up with my own creativity. So I'm scrolling through here and I'm looking at what catches my attention as far as an image, right? So I'm gonna look through here and, and something as simple as this, attention seniors, catches my attention right away. Cause all these other ones are a little too busy. This is a video. So right now I'm just showing you guys how to do a photo ad. So what I can do here is scroll up and I can say, you know, I like this image. I can copy, I can edit, save, go back to the Facebook ad creator. So when you go to ad creative, just click edit, edit media. And then you go to the top where it says add media and then you upload. Oh, here it is. So attention seniors, open, select it, click next. Keep it original just like that. Hit next. I'll turn on optimize. All optimize does is just make it look as best as possible. It wants your image to look nice whenever they show it to people. All right, and then hit done. So now you have an image for your ad that you found on social media. So the next thing you do is they want you to create the text that goes along with your ad. The next part is if you scroll down, is the primary text and the headline. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the ad library and I'm gonna look for some text that I like that is already, it's already with, to be honest with you, this is not too bad. Why don't more seniors know about this? Um, the, I like the beginning of that, but it's a little too short. Um, this one is not too bad. U.S. Seniors over 50 need to read this. It's, an, it's actually not bad. And the reason I like it is it does have a, th this sentence here for as little as a dollar a day. I like it in copy because what happens is that whenever somebody opts into an ad, they, the, the fact that it says a dollar, they, they know that they're going to be paying for something. So they don't think it's something free, a free program. And then right here at the bottom, um, it has some bullet points, which I like. So let's say you like this one. You can copy this. Actually, you can even open this. And then copy out. I'll, I'll copy up to the part where it says seniors. And then I'll go back to the ads manager. And I'll copy that here in, in the primary text. So seniors over 50. So the, the first sentence I like that calls out my ideal audience. Hey, seniors over 50. So if I'm scrolling and I'm a senior over 50, it's gonna catch my attention. There's a new state regu uh, regulated burial insurance. Now what that means is that these, these policies that we sell final expense have been regulated by the state. They had to go through a state approval for them to actually be sold in that state. So that's true. Uh, that is designed to pay 100% of funeral expenses up to $40,000 for as little as a dollar a day. I like that. Um, so here in the bullet points, hey, have you been turned down in the past? Uh, you've already had life insurance or are on a fixed income. I like that because those are three major issues that people with final expense have. And then here, click learn more to see if you qualify. Learn more is my favorite call to action. And it's actually proven statistically to get the most conversion on ads. And then in the... In the headline, you can put something as, as simple as, you know, attention seniors, read this. And the reason I like that is that it just catches their attention on the ad as well. And what happens is they're going to read the text. You have a certain amount of characters that you can put in the headline. So you want to make sure that it catches their attention. So the next part is the call to action. Now the call to action, like I mentioned before, is, hey, what do you want them to do? There's gonna be a button at the bottom of your ad. And what you wanna do is just hit learn more. So what happens is that button will be at the bottom of, of the ad and that'll lead people to their next step. So once you're done, you just created the ad. 
The next step is you can create your form. Your form is basically what people are going to fill out whenever they say, yes, I want to learn more. Now, what I recommend is keeping it simple. Um, let me see if I can show you mine. So when you go in there, all you have to do is design it. And what I like to do, the first thing is in my form, I like to type in, it'll, it'll, it'll guide you through this is fill out this form and we'll get back to you. And here's why I do that. I want these people to know that I'm going to call them. And for me, that increases the chances of if they fill it out, if you just read that sentence and you fill out this form, what happens is, you know, I'm going to call you. And if you don't want me to call you, then you won't fill it out. And then I put here, we'll give you a call with more info. Now, the first questions I like to ask is for security purposes, what is your high school mascot? I do that because if I call somebody and they just filled out their security question, I say, hey, Jane, this is Anthony, just just for security purposes, you had put that your high school mascot was, you know, a tiger. Then they know that, hey, I remember filling that out. The second question I like to ask is, who is your beneficiary? Because I want to have that personal connection when I call them. And so I make sure that I ask that question, who is your beneficiary? And what happens is when I call and I say, hey, you put your mascot as a tiger and then you put your daughter, you know, Stephanie as your beneficiary. Is that true? So now they know, OK, this is a real deal. And then I put the third question is, what amount of coverage are you looking for? Once they fill that out, then they can get to the next part of the survey of the of the form. And that's where they fill out their their name. And this typically, since it's Facebook, is already filled out. Full name, email, phone number, address, city, state, zip code, date of birth, and gender. And the reason being is that if I have that information, then typically I know, you know, hey, I know their age. Okay, cool. I can start running some quotes. Or if they put their 95, then I know, hey, I can't, I'm not gonna call this person because they're out of, you know, they're out of the the the, the, the age bracket. Um, I put gender just so I can again, I can start running some quotes ahead of time. And then when I call them, all I have to do is fill out the, um, you know, like the questionnaire of their health to find out if they're level or graded. Uh, the next part is my privacy policy. Um, I gave a, you guys a tip on my course. You can go create a free privacy policy at uh, freeprivacypolicycreator.com. And then it'll give you a link. You have to have a privacy policy in order for you to uh, run ads, but it takes two seconds. You go free, uh, free privacy policy generator put in the name of your business, it'll create it for you and it's free. Uh, and then the last step is, wait, there's just one more step. I always have a final step on my form and that final step is just click here so that you can schedule an appointment. This is how you get inbound leads. So imagine that, you know, you're, you're running ads, you're out and about, you're running errands and all of a sudden you look at your calendar and you, oh, I got an appointment set up, which has happened to us many times. So this is how you get inbound appointments. So before you even call the lead, they're already booking appointments with you because they saw your ad, they filled out the form. So then you get a notification saying, oh, you got a new lead. Plus you get a notification that some of them have filled out an appointment. Whenever that happened, the chances of you closing them increases. So once you do that, again, you filled out, you, you went to uh, adlibrary.com, a uh, Facebook ad library, you Google that. You get the picture that you want that catches your attention. You get the copy and then you put a simple headline is attention seniors read this. Once you're done with that, you create the form. I just gave you all the questions to put on your form. You're pretty much ready. You would hit publish and then you wait for your ad to get approved. So that's pretty simple. That's as easy as it is. If you guys, um, you know, you can create this account. You can create this ad in a few minutes, uh, five minutes or less. The reason it took me more time is because I was making sure I walk you through the tutorial. But if you're doing this on your own, go to ad library, open it up, open up your ads manager, find an ad that you like that looks like it's, hey, this looks like it has some, you know, that it'll catch my attention. Copy and paste, download the picture, create your form, and then you publish your ad. And next thing you know, your ad's running in a few minutes. So. If you guys want to learn that process or have you know, access to the recordings of this where we help you set these up, uh, feel free to go to lifeagentblueprint.com and you can take advantage of our course. Not only does it have training on final expense ads, but also the script training. It also has all the other trainings of, of you know, sitting with the client, uh, product training. So it's an extensive course that goes from A to Z from a life for a life insurance agent of how to get leads, how do I sell, and then how do I place my apps and make sure I keep them in the books. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, comment below in the group. Appreciate you guys. And we're looking forward to seeing you guys have a tremendous amount of success in this industry.